friends, in today's interaction with you, I'll share a few lessons of life that I learned the hard way. And I believe you too can learn from my experience. So here I go. We are living in challenging times. COVID-19 taught us many lessons. The important being the lessons of uncertainty. As the Greek philosopher Heraclitus said, we never step into the same river twice. However, when change is combined with fear, risk, and uncertainty, we find ourselves struggling to make sense of it and floundering in our response to it. If we, however, are determined in purpose and passionate about the work we do, we can move mountains. I come from a very modest background. My parents struggled to educate the four of us. I could not appreciate their struggle when I was growing up. Later, after many years when I did, my father was gone. I'm sure there are many of you with similar stories. Their show of compassion and unstinted support saw me heading technical education in the country, having entered the academics at a level that at best can be called basic. There were many adversities along the way. You too will find them, I'm sure. As a child, I was neither sharp nor conventionally intelligent. I was most of the time seen and out of hospitals which even resulted in eight major surgeries. Back then, continuing education was serious enough, let alone becoming something in life. Sheer dint and perseverance, perseverance saw me through college. Never give up, never wallow in self-pity for the lessons I learned. Now was the time for more serious business of choosing a profession. Though for most, it would have been a good position in an industry. My passion was in emoting, in acting. Parents were in no mood to relent. Still stubborn that I was, along with a friend of mine, went to Prithvi Theatre in Mumbai, gave auditions, and lo, was living in the stories of Shakespeare in English theatre. This went on for a year or so. I was back to academics, for the worldly needs were never going to be met in the theatre. Another lesson I learned was never, never experiment with your own life, but rather do it with others. There are so many who need advice, you know. Never want to fit stereotypes. I joined teaching after professionally trained to be an engineer. Well, firstly, I thought I would have lots of time to pander to my instincts, the other being I could advise people. The journey took me through several ups and downs, as happens with everyone, I suppose. Being in a government setup, and having helped the state implement several IT initiatives, I came in direct contact with several bureaucrats in the state. An important lesson for me here was never mess with the government. Even as I took a certain pension issue of my seniors and my teachers for redressal to the government and actually stuck, struck work on the statewide computerized admissions because the government was intransigent on that issue, I realized the might of the government when they actually took over the entire activity on their own without battling an eyelid and barred all of us from entering. That I continue to work on the admissions later is providence. Having succeeded in convincing the government of my point of view, never lose hope in hopeless situations was another lesson for me. Thus, better vibes restored. Between me and the bureaucracy, I was back in the world of films, albeit differently this time. The Secretary of Education this time wanted a film on Mahatma Gandhi made by me and my team on the occasion of the 125th birth anniversary. Instinctively, I said yes, which I was to regret later for I did not know anything of making films. The passion to learn and be ready to do even the do undoable was pushing me. The journey now took me through the portals of NFDC, editing, writing subtitles, post-processing in studios, and the entire works. Probably looking at my tenacity, perseverance, and resolve like the sage Vishwamitra, who brought King Harishchandra to his knees, the secretary thought he could do the same to me and said the film must be projected on large screens in open air stadium in Bali, in Mumbai, and then beamed on Doordarshan 
on October the 2nd that year. This was a stupendous task indeed. More hard lessons were to follow. That I could successfully do all that stood in good state much later in life. However, the important lesson was think before you say yes. And if you have said yes, you better make it stick. Uh, like life goes through multiple acts, my next act took me to an administrative position in one of the largest women universities in Asia. I was literally the odd man out, but that's me. My lesson here was you need monumental patience to deal with women and their problems. It was doubly difficult for me, for I had no interaction with the other sex, either in the school or in the college, both being almost boys only. Every day was a lesson here. But again, if you trust yourself and your instincts, just go for it. My life's experience was varied and colorful. One more color was to unfold. Because of my work in IT, I was probably asked by, to join All India Council for Technical Education, AICT, the National Regulator for Technical Education as its vice chairman. The organization was in bad shape then, with everyone accusing it of corruption. The then education secretary of the union government thought I could be like Atlas the Titan in Hesiod's Giovanni, who carried the world on his shoulders and similarly carried AICT on my shoulders. One month into the job, the then minister ordered a CBI raid, and here I was cooped in my room, watching national television channels, beaming in my room, my office, and the raid. That afternoon, I and the then chairman were called to the ministry. I was mentally prepared to be back home and even told my wife so. However, fate had other plans. I was asked to take over and the then head was declared persona non grata. That was baptism by fire for me. An important lesson again, the government is all powerful and can do anything if it wishes so. The six years I spent there were full of life and learning. Especially interesting would be two instances. A certain Congress MP who wanted his institute to be approved accused that I was a BJP sympathizer and hence was refusing his approval. When I did not budge, he accused that I was a Brahmin and that he belonged to the reserve constituency and hence I was refusing his approval. Having cut no eyes, he now accused that I wanted a certain fee as bribe to approve. And since he was not willing to part, I was refusing his approval. The IT initiatives that I implemented allowed anyone to apply and receive approval sitting in the comfort of homes with a deficiency chart made available to go. This was transparency and accountability at its best. However, he would have nothing of it, was in no mood to relent and threatened privilege motion against me. That all this happened before my minister was also to prove something for me. Keep away from the political class. The third of his accusations was actually in bad taste, for I had nothing except credibility, and he sought to attack that. I resigned forthwith, but my minister said running away was no solution to any problem. That, of course, bolstered my faith in the systems. The lesson for me then. And for you now, or if you are right, hold on to your ground. Never yield when you are right. The second instance is based on an RTI story. The CIC, Chief Information Commissioner, had ordered that the petitioner search my office himself for the information he saw when he claimed was not given to his satisfaction even after several reminders. The petitioner approached my office, heady with the order after office hours and laid claim to searching the office himself. I convinced him with great difficulty that, needs, that he needs to come the next day when the office opened in the morning to do his bidding. Having purchased some breathing time and composed as I was by then, collecting my wits as it was, I had to ensure that my large office 
was actually shielded from being subjected to placement of papers rather than a search that yielded papers. However, it was beyond me to ensure that such was not the case. Hitting upon an out-of-box idea, I carefully ensured placement of several video cameras throughout the office before the search began. The petitioner, obviously on top of the moon, in the belief that he could bring a government officer to the knees, was taken aback when a camera followed him everywhere, wherever he went, and promptly abandoned the search. Obviously, the order never said cameras couldn't follow. The big lesson here is keep your eyes and ears open and mouth shut. Keep your wits and presence of mind and then go by the gut. All of those six years I had to endure the investigating agency. For once they enter your house, they seldom go out. That's a lesson too. Keep them out if possible. In the process, I also learned that mere writing a comment or two on the file is not enough, but that a speaking order is what will eventually help you. Every case has a context and the context must be recreated if you want to be at peace with the agencies. I learned this truth as well, the hard way. When one of the officers asked me to interpret the notes written a decade earlier on the files, and if I did not, I would be made party to the case. There will always be risks in life, and we must face up to the challenges with fortitude and forbearance. Risks that can predict can be mitigated, but uncertainty is what makes life interesting as well as challenging. Friends, what we are seeing today is not just a new version of the risk society that sociologists spoke about in the 1980s. Today's risk has a universal quality. Almost no corner of the globe is untouched by it. It has also triggered a universalization of fear, a primal fear of the stranger and of the uncertainty. But we must hope that the shared and collective quality of this fear will enable empathy, social cooperation, and solidarity in ways that have been manifestly framed of late. Friends, your generation has learned valuable lessons that mine did not have the opportunity to learn how to negotiate uncertainty and how to make choices under conditions that are unpredictable. The biggest lesson of all would be to keep your work animated by the character you possess and the respect you will have for the law. You must also respect your parents and stop pretending that you are anything other than what you are and direct all your energy into finishing the work that matters to you. You must dream. I think a lot of people dream, but cannot realize their dreams, but they lack an inner resolve to translate those dreams into actions. And while they are busy dreaming, the really happy people, the really successful people, the really interesting, engaged, powerful people are busy doing. Hence, dream, but connect the passion with action. Thank you.